If I can't create a product that's better than what I saw on the television last week, then I'm going to buy it myself. Hey everyone and welcome back to our channel. My name's Anne and along with my good friend Wayne, we run the Sussex Handmade Soap Company, which is a small bath and body business based in the southeast of the UK. And we also run this YouTube channel. And today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna be having a bit of fun with today's video. Today's video is inspired by The Apprentice TV show, which is on every week at the moment in the UK. I do tend to watch it. It's a little bit of a guilty pleasure for me. And last week I knew I was gonna enjoy the episode because it was all about formulating a skincare product for males. Um, and as soon as I saw this advertised, I was like, that's going to be a fun episode to watch. And it certainly didn't let me down. If you do not get The Apprentice in your country and you're not sure what it is, very briefly, it is where a group of candidates go into what is essentially a long filmed job interview. And every week they do different tasks. And then whoever performs the poorest gets fired by Alan Sugar, who is in charge of the whole thing. Um, so that in a nutshell is what The Apprentice is. So this week it was skincare and they were split into two teams, which is what they are always done. They always work in two different teams and they were tasked with a skincare product for males. And the first team went away and they created a product that was all right. It wasn't especially exciting, but there was nothing inherently wrong with it. And given that skincare is not their area of expertise and they won't know the benefits of certain ingredients and they won't be used to formulating, what they created was fine, it was adequate. The other team, however, was led by a leader who, in my opinion, wasn't the best leader to say the least. He wanted to call his skincare product Venom, which straight away I was like, why would you call something you're putting on your skin Venom? Thankfully his teammates agreed with me and they ended up renaming it Anti-Venom, which is still not the best name in my opinion, but it's a heck of a lot better than calling it Venom. Um, he then decided he wanted it to be an exfoliator. Again, that's fine. And then he said he wanted it to be targeted to the mature male, so 50 plus, and he wanted it to be bright green. And that I couldn't understand because it's like, why would you target the mature male and then have a product that's bright green and called anti-venom? Those kind of demographics just don't work for me. If he was targeting a much younger audience, then perhaps it would have worked a little better, but I couldn't quite see where he was going with that theory. But anyway, today what we're going to do is we are going to pretend that we are working underneath this team leader and we are going to imagine that we are creating this anti-venom exfoliating product for men but we're just going to try and show you how much better we hopefully can make it because their product was terrible i'm not going to kind of pull any punches it was humorous to watch they used what i can only imagine it was water soluble dye from what it looked like and how it performed and they created a product that was so green that it stained everybody who used it no that's just no 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 and essentially what's the point in putting in a bright green dye that is not actually bringing any actual function to a product, especially when you're targeting at a older market. So we're gonna make our own anti-venom exfoliating green master day, as if he is kind of our team leader, we're in charge, and we're just gonna try and show you how we would do it and how we think we could make it that bit better. So today I'm going to imagine that I'm working under my team leader and the brief I've been given is to create an exfoliating scrub targeted to the male over 50 market. It's got to be green and it's going to be called anti-venom. So immediately I start thinking, right, anti-venom, what does that suggest to me? Anti-venom to me suggests something that is clean, that is non-toxic and that is beneficial to you. So I start thinking, what do I want to create with that? Well, it's got to be an exfoliator, so we're gonna go with an exfoliating scrub. Now, thinking about the clean and the non-toxic elements kind of draws me to nature, and I'm thinking about nature, and I'm like, right, 
nature, the sea. So let's focus on the sea for our scrub. So have a little bit more of a think and I was like, right, okay, an exfoliating scrub. We're inspired by the sea. Let's use some sea salt in today's scrub. That'll be a really nice base ingredient. Sea salt is full of nutrients. It is anti-inflammatory. It can help clear pores. It can help control oil production. So that's gonna be a really nice ingredient to include. So we've got our salt scrub. And what I noticed in the program is that they were not formulating their own bases. They were using things such as like a cream base or a gel base. So we are going to use our own foaming sugar scrub base, but we're gonna be turning it into a salt scrub. So our base is gonna be our foaming bath base, and we're going to use that with our sea salt. Then I started giving some thought to the other points. The point that it has to be green, and it's like, well, I could throw in some water-soluble dye, although considerably less than they used, but what is the point of that? That is not going to actually add any benefits to our scrub other than colouring it green. And is the colour green really going to appeal to that over 50s market if, if, if it is purely there for colour and for nothing else? Probably not. So, how can we dye our scrub green, but with something that is actually going to be beneficial? So I had a little think, and then we had the light bulb moment. Let's use spirulina. Spirulina is an algae, and it can be found in fresh water and seawater. So it kind of follows along with our sea salt and our from the sea theme. So spirulina is gonna be a lovely ingredient that will hopefully dye our scrub a shade of green, probably not the bright, bright green they got on the program, but it's going to be green. And it has also got some benefits as well. It is rich in nutrients. It has the ability to tone the skin. It can reduce inflammation and it promotes a youthful complexion as well, which if you are a mature male, you may be trying to hold on to that youthfulness for a little bit longer. Because let's face it, 50 isn't even old, but in this program, they're all in their early 20s. And for some reason, I seem to think that 50 plus is ancient, which it really isn't. I am heading that way quickly myself. Um, so yeah, but it promotes a youthful complexion. Now we have to bear in mind that with an exfoliating scrub, it's a rinse off product. So although those ingredients do have those benefits, they're really unlikely to be massively noticed in something like a scrub that is a wash off product. But at least it's better than just chucking something in that has absolutely no benefit whatsoever. We are also going to use some glycerin because that is a humectant that is going to draw moisture to the skin and keep you hydrated and help your skin look plumper and younger. And we're also going to use some jojoba oil because again, that is another really nice ingredient for skin. I thought about popping in something like a rose oil, which would suit the mature skin because it is an anti-aging oil, but rose oil is very expensive. And like I said, it's a wash off product. So we don't really want to waste those expensive ingredients for it's essentially a product that's gonna be in contact with your skin for such a short amount of time that you're really not gonna have a chance to absorb those benefits. So that is essentially what I've decided to create today. Those are the ingredients we're gonna be using. We are also going to be using some essential oils. We are going to be scenting our scrub with mint and lemon. And the reason I'm using mint and lemon essential oils is that they are fairly neutral essential oils. They are going to hopefully appeal to a male nose, but also they are quite strong, especially the mint. And the reason I want quite strong essential oils today is because I know that the spirulina can sometimes have a slight fishy aroma, and that would not be good in a body of products that you're going to be washing with. So I'm trying to use some stronger smelling essential oils just to kind of mask any slight fishy smell that may actually come across from the spirulina. And the last thing we're gonna be using is a little bit of preservative because, 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 this is gonna come into contact with water and there is potential for getting water into the product. It, there is a potential that bacteria or mold may grow and we don't want that, so we need to preserve it. That's what we're gonna be using. Now let's make it. So the first thing I'm going to do today is take 100 grams of our foaming bath base. And this is gonna be the base of our exfoliating salt scrub today. And I'm just gonna decant it into my plastic bowl. 
and then I'm just going to give it a bit of a whisk just to kind of loosen it up a little bit. Once I've loosened it a little, I'm going to add in 16.6 .6 grams of glycerin. And like I say, this is a humectant that is going to draw moisture and help your skin to retain that moisture as well. And then we're just going to whisk that to incorporate it as well. And next we are going in with 10 grams of jojoba oil. And again, whisking that to combine. Now we're going in with our essential oils. I'm going to use 2.6 grams of peppermint. So going in with that now. And then we're going to be using 4 grams of lemon essential oil. We're also going to add in our preservative at this point, and we are using Preservative Eco. The foaming base already has preservative incorporated into it, so I just need to add another 2.4 grams to allow for those additional ingredients that we are incorporating. I'm using the preservative at a rate of 1%. And now, back to whisking. So now I've whisked our base ingredients and it is fluffed up quite nicely. And you could of course do that in a food processor if you wanted to. Because we we're only making a very small wax today, I just found it easier to pop it in the bowl and whisk by hand. But by all means, use a stand mixer if you are making bigger batches. That is our base kind of all done. And now we need to incorporate the salt and the spirulina. So I've got my sea salt and my spirulina here, and this is just a regular fine sea salt with no anti-caking ingredient added. And this here is our spirulina. And what I'm gonna do is actually add the spirulina to the sea salt just to kind of try and incorporate that green color a little bit before we then mix it in with the rest of the base ingredients. So I'm just gonna very carefully use the end of this chopstick just to work our spirulina into our sea salt and as I said for those of you who did see the program last week our scrub is not going to be nearly as bright and vibrant as theirs but I think that's a good thing I think theirs was far too bright especially for the target market and at least our spirulina is actually going to have something to add to the skin rather than just a nice green stain so I've now coloured our sea salt as much as I can with the spirulina and we have got kind of a deep green colour going on. Now I'm going to bring back in our base scrub and we are just going to add in the sea salt and spirulina to our scrub base. And all we need to do now is just kind of whisk it really well to get it really nicely combined. And here we have our green exfoliating anti-venom. It's not the most attractive colour, but being that the brief was green, I never expected it to be the most attractive colour. However, it is certainly green, so we've covered the brief there. It is exfoliating, it's got that sea salt. Sea salt itself can actually be quite a harsh exfoliator on the skin, but given that the target market is males over 50, they could be more prone to actually having rougher skin, especially if they've done manual labour or worked outside. So I think that male skin can take a firmer kind of exfoliant, which is another reason why we included the sea salt, because I think it's actually going to be a really good exfoliant for those older males who may actually prefer a more rough exfoliating experience. We are just going to decant this into our jar now and see how it looks. So just decanting our sludgy green anti-venom into the jar now. And 
I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a bash down, which I'm not gonna do on camera because the table will wobble. So there is our anti-venom exfoliating green scrub. And I'm pleased to report it doesn't smell like fish. Yeah, there's a kind of minty scent with a hint of lemon. So let's get the lid on that. And then we're gonna to need to move on to creating very quickly a very basic label for it. So I can't stress just how quickly Wayne and I have knocked up our label for our scrub. It's getting on a bit. We're not selling this product, so really it's just for fun and we didn't want to spend too much time on it. But this is the label we have just created. As you can see, it is pretty basic. The brief for the label, again, he wanted green, so we have gone with green. And we've also had a little nod to the colour of their exfoliating scrub in our very bright green down here at the bottom. We have focused on the anti-venom name and with our tagline we have just gone with clean plant-based skincare because that to us kind of encompasses the anti-venom name. We've written obviously that it's an exfoliating salt scrub and we've gone with our tagline of unleash the power of the sea purely because that sounds like quite a masculine thought sort of thing and it kind of Again, it draws on the fact that it's got spirulina in it, it's got the sea salt in it and all of that. So I'm just going to very crudely attach this to our jar now using some sticky tape. So there we go. There is our own anti-venom. Um, obviously, if we were going to be selling this, we would have to send it off for preservative testing. The only thing that possibly concerns me is the use of the spirulina and how well the preservative would preserve that. That's obviously something that the pet test would cover if we did send it off, which we're not going to because it is just for fun. The last thing to do is to actually have a little test and check that we don't end up looking like the Hulk. So the last thing we're gonna do today is test the scrub. I've got a feeling because we are using salt rather than sugar, it may not bubble up as much, but that is what we are going with. Mmm. And this is a lovely bowl of warm water. So I'm just gonna rub it into my skin. Oh yeah, look at that. Lovely and green. Let's get it, let's get it up the arms. I've got faith that I'm not gonna dye myself because I like to think I know what I am doing. Nice and exfoliating, as I thought, it's not foaming up much. But when I actually get that water onto my skin, it's washing away nicely. And you can see the bubbles kind of forming in the uh, bowl of water here to show it has got those foaming properties. They're just not coming through super well when we're actually rubbing it into our skin, but that's fine. Smells okay, smells all right, minty, lemony, not fishy, not my favourite smell, but not unpleasant. And there we go. I am not green. So I have to say, after drying my hands, they are feeling lovely and soft, lovely and smooth, super exfoliated and not a hint of green. So I'm very happy with how our salt scrub has performed today. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. It has been a little bit different to the norm and it has just been a little bit of fun, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with just having fun once in a while, is there? If you did like our video, then please do give it a thumbs up. If you like our channel as a whole, then do hit subscribe and hit that notification bell as well. And feel free to leave us a comment letting us know what you thought of today's video. And if you caught the programme last week, then feel free to leave a comment sharing your views as well. Next week, no, Friday, <laughs> this Friday, we will be doing the results of our cheap and steep soap experiment. So that is what is coming up for Friday. Um, and if you haven't enjoyed today's video, then I suppose I'm just gonna see you back in the boardroom later. Until then, bye for now. You're fired. <laughs>